Uh, we can use that equation, kW equals kA times kB, to find out the kB for a conjugate base. So, just like example 15.14. All right, so like the last problem, to really get a feel for what this would look like, say on a homework problem or an uh, exam or quiz, I'll have to rewrite this. Okay, let's rewrite it how I would write it. Okay, once again, not called examples. It'll just be numbers, like number seven. Actually, I don't think I put the number sign on there. So usually it's like seven. Okay. You feeling more like... I usually don't have titles. Again, find the, oh, geez. How about what is? The pH of a 0 0.1 molar NaCHO2, that's sodium formate, even though it says nacho. Okay, that should really be like nacho. Okay, and it's like tough doing this problem like this time of the day because I'm hungry. Just got a lab, and you know. okay, now I want some nachos. Okay, fine. What is the pH of a 0.1 molar nacho solution? All right, question mark. The salt completely dissociates. You know that. I don't need to tell you that. This is going to be essentially a weak base problem. Formate CHO2 minus is a weak base of formic acid. So I would need to know that. So I'd tell you OBT dubs. That's the hip way to say it. And again, I'm very hip. You guys knew that. The Ka of formic acid, HCHO2 is hmm. I'll, I'll look it up to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. If I couldn't impress you anymore, yes, I know the Ka's of some weak acids off the top of my head. But let's, let's double check that. I'll edit this out of the video. You have a lot of angles. I do. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. Boom. That just happened. All right, so we got the Ka of formic acid. Okay, so what's this read like? What is the pH of a 0.1 molar nacho solution? Oh, by the way, Ka of formic acid is 0.1. Okay, thank you. That's how I would write it. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Time. All right. Now it's good. That's how I would write it. All right. So one of the things that uh, is maybe uh, a little bit different than the previous problems we did. So this is just going to be a KB problem, a weak base problem, but we got CHO2 minus. That's going to be my conjugate base. The sodium is just a spectator. It doesn't really do anything. Um, but I have the Ka for HCO2. Those aren't the same thing. That's a nacho. That's not a nacho. Okay? That's formic acid. That's hachot. Hachotu. I don't know what that is. Um, so the reason why that is, a lot of times, uh, you just don't find the Kb. So for these carbon or KAs, okay, or yeah, KBs. So if you look at this up for formate, a lot of the times for the conjugates, you're not going to find that information, okay. Even if you just, I mean, if we looked up in Google KB for formate, they probably tell you the KA. KA is on Wikipedia. Actually, probably the PKA. We'll talk about that later, All right? So what we're going to have to do <coughs> is calculate the KB from our KA using our new handy dandy equation that we just wrote down previously. All right, so we'll need to do that. How do you know that KB 
The best I can tell you is that they're just, you just recognize that it's two different things. Here we've got sodium formate, and I probably would, I'd probably write it out, sodium formate. This is sodium formate. And here is formic acid. Hey, those aren't the same thing. So I've got the Ka for formic acid. And this is sodium formate. So as soon as you recognize that those aren't the same thing, one of them is probably the conjugate. Formates the conjugate of formic acid. Okay. So that's probably your tipping point. That's, that's what you should look for. They're not the same thing. Okay. So what's uh, formate going to do? As the problem stated, you know it's going to dissociate, but you know that. It's going to be a soluble ionic compound. So sodium formate dissociates into sodium and formate. And that is my conjugate base of formic acid. Just like fluoride. Fluoride was conjugate base of HF. It's accepting protons. So this is my. So CHO2 minus. If it's a conjugate base, it's going to do what? It's going to accept protons from water, right? It's still weak. It's going to be a KB eventually. So that's going to accept. It's going to make HCHO2 plus. After it accepts a water or a proton from water, it's going to make hydroxide. So that's the biggest leap for this problem, realizing that that is, in fact, a weak base. Even though you're looking at it, it's just an ionic compound, that is a weak base. All right? Just like sodium bicarbonate. We could ask a question about sodium bicarbonate. HCO3 minus, that's a base. That's a weak uh, conjugate base of carbonic acid. After that, it's just like the NH3 problem we did, okay? Uh, besides calculating the KB, all right? So we're gonna have to set up our ice table, and we're gonna plug it into our KB, which is products. Over reactants. Water is not in our equilibrium. And so, what's our initial concentration of formate? 0.1. So we're gonna have to fill out the rest of this table. But well, we're getting good at this, aren't we? You're even starting to enjoy it, don't lie. Actually lie. For me, lie for me. All right, so initially, before uh, formate starts bumping into water, what's gonna be my initial concentration of formic acid, ACHO2? Zero. What's going to be my initial concentration of hydroxide? About, About zero. Good. You guys are on the ball. All right, so after they start bumping into each other, after some protons get donated and accepted, what's going to happen to the concentration of my CH2, CHO2 minus? It's going to go down. Do we know how much? X. X. What about formic acid, HCHO2, and hydroxide? They're going to go up by X. Good. All right, so this is looking pretty familiar, right? 0 0.1, they didn't even change the 0.1. It's still 0.1. Come on. I usually go like 0.1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 3, 5, whatever. Whatever comes in a row. 4, 5, 6, my favorite. 
All right, so now we're going to plug this into our KB. So we're going to have x times x. That's going to be x squared all over 0.1 minus x. <coughs> so, the only, um, so the only other thing we have to do besides, uh, you know, uh, in addition to what we did for that ammonia problem, is actually calculate the KB. We have the KA for the conjugate, so now we're going to have to use that new handy dandy equation, KW equals KA times KB. So KB equals KW over KA. KW is a constant. KA, KW is a constant. KA was given to us, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. Not a lot of room, but I'll sneak it in there. Some of you will be able to see it. I'm thinking ahead. I made more room. So what is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4th? I did. It is neg negative 14 on top for the KW? Yes. KA is on the bottom. That's right. So that does look kind of like an 8, doesn't it? So that's, that should be a 0. What do we get? Point five six. Five point six. Ten times times ten to the negative eleventh. All right, so we got our KB. So now we'll be able to solve for x. And so far, we've got a KB equals x squared all over point one minus x. Uh oh, we've got an x squared all over an x. Oh no! We'll have to use the quadratic formula. Unless... x is small? Oh yeah, what about x is small? Could we apply x is small? Here we got 0.1 for initial concentration. Our kb, that's what we're going to use, so that's 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th. Is that a small number? Mm -hmm. They just told me. Make sure you're using your scientific notation properly, E or EXP. <coughs> that should be right. I mean, so think about this. You know, for scientific notation, 10 to the negative 14 divided by 10 to the negative 4. Since it's scientific notation, you can subtract. So it's negative 14 minus a negative 4, so it'd be negative 10. And so 1 divided by 1.8, 1 divided by 1 over 2. So that's you know, 5 times 10 to the negative, 0.5 times 10 to the negative 10. So that does look right. I'll buy it. And we can turn it to the KB, not the, the KA. Yeah, KB, what we're going to use in, this, uh, in the equation. That KB is going to determine how much hydroxide is being made. And so since it's so small, we know we're not going to make much hydroxide. So this x subtracted from that point 0.1 is not going to make that big a deal. And so, yeah, we can use the x is small. I would, uh, so you don't have to use the x is small. If you actually do the quadratic formula, you'll get a more accurate answer. But have fun. Oh, do you have to write x is small? Yes, you absolutely have to write x is small, small, and put an exclamation point. It's saving you a lot of algebra. Exclamation point. You have to be happy about it, too. All right, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. All right, so now we got what? KB equals x squared 
all over 0 0.100. 0 0. Multiply both sides by 0.1. Take the square root. It's almost like we've done this before. And then we just calculated that KB, so let's put that in. Two point four times ten negative six. Everybody like it? Anybody love it? Two point three seven. Five point six for the KB. Yeah. I'll take that though. You give me that, I'll take it. All right. So what is that for our purposes? That's our hydroxide, right? Since this is a base, we're going to need that to figure out the pH, right? So that's our hydroxide concentration. Any units on that concentration? Molarity. Molarity, yep. And then what can we do in uh, a very small amount of space? <laughs> Getting worried. And sir, we might. I don't know. Let's make some moves. So I got the pOH, negative log of the hydroxide. I'm just, just put that in there. I can't, I can't write it. I don't have enough room. <laughs> I'm giving up. 5.6? And then our pH. Equals 14 minus pOH. And so what do we get? 8.4. 8.4? So that's our pH. <clears throat> so for all intents and purposes, this was exactly like that ammonia problem, exactly like that weak base problem, except for the fact that we had to figure out the KB from its conjugate acid, because it's the conjugate base of a weak acid, primarily. That's what people would think about it. Okay. So it's not a new way to calculate pH, it's the same way to a, a new situation.